This is the first in a series of four bite-sized sessions on self-evaluation. In this session, we will explore what is self-evaluation. To support you with how to evaluate your service, the Care Inspectorate have developed the document Self-Evaluation for Improvement, Your Guide. This can be found on our hub. In response to the pandemic, we've produced Key Question 5, a self-evaluation resource which asks you to evaluate how well you're supporting children and families during COVID-19. This key question will sit alongside our quality framework for early learning and childcare when it's published later this year. In the resource, there are three key questions for you to answer. These are, how are we doing? How do we know? And what are we going to do now? Self-evaluation is your opportunity to reflect on what your service does well and to identify what you could do better. It should establish a baseline or a starting point from which you can put in place plans with clear priorities for actions that will improve outcomes for children and their families using your service. Used effectively, continuous self-evaluation helps monitor progress and measure the impact that your changes have made on outcomes or the differences made for children and their families and the staff within your service. The key to writing a quality self-evaluation is to use evaluative language. Try not to list a series of descriptive comments. Here are a few examples of evaluative language. This is by no, no means an exhaustive list, but merely a few suggestions to get you started. The next three slides give examples as to how evaluative language can be used in practice when writing your self-evaluation. A useful trick is to apply the so what question to everything you've written. So what does this mean to the children in our care, their families and our staff team? Move away from bullet pointed lists which tell us nothing about the impact the work you're doing is having on the people who use or work within your service. This is an example from Quality Indicator 5.1. You can see how the three bullet points have been combined into a statement which shares the impact on the children. We've highlighted in yellow the examples of evaluative language used. Here's an example from Quality Indicator 5.2. This slide shares how we came to our conclusion and the action taken as a result. Again, on this slide, we've shared the activity undertaken and the impact this has had on the children in our care using an example from Quality Indicator 5.3. Please note 5.3 is not applicable to childminding services who do not employ assistance. And the examples we've given are general statements. You will, of course, hold evidence to back up the statements you have made within your self-evaluation, which will be individual to your own service. The health and social care standards underpin your practice. Make sure you can demonstrate through your evaluations how you're meeting the needs of the children and the families who use your service. Consider which health and social care standard are the most relevant for your service, children and your families. Consider as well the relevant best practice documents underpinning the work you're doing. How are you reflecting this both in your practice and in your evaluative summary? Ask yourself too, how have you reflected the ELC opening guidance in your evaluation? Can you evidence how you've used this, again with a clear focus on the sections most relevant to your service? In this session, we've provided a short summary to introduce self-evaluation and share some of the documents which will support you in completing your submission. During our next session, we will discuss the first question, how are we doing, and consider the information and detail which is required to ensure you get the very best out of your service self-evaluation.